Hey guys, it's Henry here, and today we are back for another installment in New Zealand Bird of the Week. From last time, you guys voted up in the poll of the last video, with there once again being another tie, this time between the Northern Royal Albatross and the Reef Heron. After flipping heads or tails, I ended up landing on the Northern Royal Albatross, which will be the bird covered in this week's episode. Reef Herons, you'll have your time to shine, someday. Anyways, let's get into this video, I hope you enjoy. The Northern Royal Albatross is a huge white bird with black underwings that only breeds in New Zealand. Northern Royal Albatross can often be sighted throughout the Southern Ocean at any time of the year, with immature birds undertaking a downwind circumnavigation in the Southern Ocean. In winter, their breeding grounds are off the coast of Southern South America. Being generally solitary foragers, they predominantly feed over continental shelves as to shelf edges. Whilst they may look similar to other albatross species, they differ from southern royal albatross by not having white under their underwings. Wandering and Antipodean albatross lack the black cutting edge to the upper mandible, and rarely exhibit an all-white head and body in combination with completely dark upper wings. When it comes to behaviour, northern royal albatrosses, like most birds in the series so far, have long-term monogamous pair bonds with shared incubation and chick rearing duties. Birds nest in colonies and breed binealially if successful in rearing a chick. A breeding cycle typically takes almost a whole year to complete, with a single egg being laid in late October to late November. Chicks, once hatched, are brewed for around 34 days and are guarded for another 6 days until they become more pet independent. After leaving their colony in pursuit of food, the chicks return to their birthplace once they reach around 3 to 4 years of age, with these birds having an average first breeding age of 8 years. Interestingly, unlike other albatross species, they are not a keen vessel follower. Being surface feeders as well as scavengers, they often obtain most of their food by seizing dead or dying prey from the surface, as well as scavenging discards and offal left over from fishing boats. Like other species of albatross, northern royals mainly feed on squid and other cephalopods, alongside fish, crustaceans, and salps. Population-wise, population estimates have con concluded that this population likely numbers around 17,000 mature individuals, with the trend of the overall population being as of yet unknown due to the lack of recent data from the Chatham Islands due to the fact that 99% of the population lives in this location, coming to a trend as of yet is difficult to say the least. Northern Royal Albatrosses are vulnerable due to storms and climatic changes, and this could likely be one of the prime threats to their survival, as these destructive weather conditions are continuing to increase to this day. Breeding success in the Chatham Islands reduced significantly after a large storm in 1985, which caused the loss of vast swaths of soil and vegetation that is vital for these birds' survival. More recently, the Tauroa head colony has been subject to egg and chick failure due to heat stress and infestation by introduced blowfly. Historically, the birds were harvested in the local Chatham Islands by local residents of the region, and this may or may not still occur occasionally to this day. Thankfully, there are no introduced mammals on the small islands where northern royal albatross breed, which is very helpful in ensuring their long-term survival. In recent years, a sprinkler system has been installed at Tauroa Head to call nesting birds on particularly hot days, with an incubator and fly repellent also being used to reduce the risk of potential blowfly infestation. Thanks for watching this episode of New Zealand Bird of the Week, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. For next week, you guys now have a new bird to vote for, that being an extinct New Zealand bird genus, known as Aptornis, or most commonly known as Adsbills, strange terror bird-esque animals that survived into relatively recent times, with both species in the south and a species in the north. I hope that you, the viewer, consider subscribing, and if you already are, be sure to like this video if you enjoyed it, and watch another one of my videos if you're feeling like it. Until next time, enjoy all things science. See you later.